Hello, my name is Kimberly Hilton and today I'm going to be doing some um, special effects with watercolors and some items that you might find around your house. So um, the colors that I'm going to be using for this is um, Phthalo Blue. This um, is the green shade by Daniel Smith and this is French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith and Payne's Gray by Daniel Smith. Um, I'm going to be doing some experiments with uh, just white sea salt is what I have but you can use any kind of salt and um, I have a piece of bubble wrap. I have some gauze that you might get from your first aid kit and um, some cling wrap um, that you can get out of your kitchen hopefully and I'll go ahead and tear a little piece of this off and we're just going to do some fun little experiments um, and see what kind of textures and special effects that we can get with these materials you can try I, I have these three colors and I'm using I'm just going to stick with these colors today but you can try this with all the colors that you own um, and see what kind of effects you can get. Um, different colors will react differently with the salt and the other materials. And I haven't tried all the colors, but um, it's it would be a fun experiment to do. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is wake up my paints. They're, uh, they've been sitting in here. This one's completely dry. This one I just squeezed out. And this one uh, I used yesterday. But um, I'm just going to take this little uh, water dropper. I think it's called a pipette. And i uh, squeeze out some clean water and just pour it in to my paints. And then I'm going to make a, uh, a wet wash and just kind of get, I'm just kind of mix it till it's like as thick as a uh, milk, like whole milk. And I'm not going to mix that whole clump there. I'm just going to let it sit there. That'll be fine. Now I'm trying to make this um, video um, very simple and easy to follow for beginners of all ages and I want everybody to be able to follow along and um, enjoy this little um, painting experiment. So um, this ultramarine blue is rather thick so I'm just gonna um, add more water to this. and wet it down that may be even a little too thick it doesn't really matter this is just experiments so um you know just do do yours however you want to do it and you can always do as many of these as you want and I'm just using um, three flat brushes that I have on hand. I'm not using my best brushes. I'm just using um, just some regular old um, synthetic flat brushes, of, as you can see, of different sizes. And in case you're wondering about my water pots, uh, I love these little water pots. And these are a freebie. Um, these are actually the lids to laundry detergent. Um, these lids are really cool because they have these little indentions here that you can set your paintbrush on and it keeps your paintbrush from you know uh, sitting down into your paint or sitting in your paint water and burning your bristles um, and it keeps your paint separate which I think is really cool and I love these and I save all of them I get and um, this particular one came from the big jugs of Tide that have the little um, pump on it I think they're 64 fluid ounce jugs of Tide I'm not sure but I, maybe you can get those on other brands but um, 
I save all the detergent lids that I get, especially these kind. The other kinds are useful, but they don't have the indentions on them. But they make good little wash cups or water pots, and they're free, so that's even better. So um, my phthalo blue is kind of kind of th a little bit thicker than whole milk, maybe like cream, but I'm gonna add a little more water and get that a little bit runnier. Phthalo blue is a very strong color. You uh, a little bit goes a very long way, and um, so I want that to be rather thin. And I'm just gonna rinse that color out a little bit into a different um, pot of water. It's good to have more than one pot of water. For this experiment, I'm going to start with the bubble wrap. And I thought this would be a pretty cool thing to try. So I'm just going to dip into this color. If you don't have Payne's Gray, you can use any color that, um, that you want to use. It doesn't matter. So um, I'm just going to paint on this gray color. onto the dry paper. I have tape separating the, um, the different um, areas so um, they won't mess each other up. I'm going to cut the top part off because I'm going to put these into a sheet protector for um, business card, um, you know, a holder, a business card holder kind of sheet protector. And I like to keep my swatches in a in a three ring binder and uh, that way I can look back on it and see what colors and effects that I like. So I'm just taking the bubble wrap. I'd already cut it down to size and I'm just going to press it onto the wet paint and then that's all we're going to do. We're going to let that dry and then we'll take it off. So for the next one, I'm going to use this clean wrap and I'm going to, I guess I'm going to use the ultramarine blue for this one. And I'm just going to paint this blue on here, just like I did with the Payne's Gray. And this brush is a bigger brush than the other one that I was using, and so it's a lot, a lot faster. So now I just took and just crumble up this, um, this uh, plastic wrap and then I'm just going to put it onto the um, that paint there and we'll see what kind of effects we get. These make good textured effects for backgrounds and maybe rocks and landscape elements so um, that will be interesting to see to see how that turns out. And I'm sure that that might react differently if I was to use a different color, but for now I'm just doing doing the ultramarine blue. And then for the gauze, I'm just going to cut a piece off because I don't want to use all of that up since I don't need that much. So um, that looks about right. And um, I think this will make, I probably don't even need the two layers. Let's just do two layers just to see. There's, there's two layers where it's folded here. Maybe one would be enough, but we'll just try it with the two. Um, so I'm going to do the phthalo blue. Just paint that on. And now I'm going to lay the galls down. You could, um, you could uh, wrinkle the galls up and lay it to where it looked more like a fabric. I think this would be really cool um, to make 
like if you were painting somebody wearing a flannel shirt or maybe um, some textures like a towel or, or, or a blanket or something, uh, I think that would be very nice to, um, to get like fabric textures. Okay, so now that we have that done, I'm not going to do anything more to that except let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll take it off and we'll see what we have. And then for, for this one, I'm using salt and Payne's Gray, salt and the Ultramarine, and salt and the Phalo Blue. So um, I'm just going to, I don't even need to rinse my brush because I have my brushes separate <laughs> and so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to get my color out. And I just wanted to see how the different colors would react with the salt. I've I've used I've done I've done some of these colors before, but not all of them together. So I just kind of want to see for myself what colors work better with this salt effect. Now, uh, putting salt on watercolor can um, make it look like uh, snow, or maybe stars, or um, just some really cool textures and um, I'm just gonna grab I have three different kinds of salt this is the fine white salt and it does make a difference how dry the um, how dry the um, paint is the longer it dries the less of an effect that you're gonna get with it so um, what I might do is go ahead and uh, let that soak in a little bit while I'm painting in some of this ultramarine blue here on this next uh, square or re rectangle. And um, we'll just do the, the top of each one and then I'll go back and add some um, salt down to um, the lower ends after that soaks in just a little bit. In case you're wondering, these are lids to um, milk, milk jugs. Uh, I just saved the lids. I think they make great little containers for, you know, I'm holding salt in it right now, but I usually put, um, I can, you can mix up washes in here or you can squirt out paint and these could be um, kind of paint pans for your larger paint brushes because sometimes the small paint pans don't fit the size of your brushes if you're using big brushes and you're trying to you know, you might damage your brush trying to um, stick them down into those smaller um, pans of paint. So I save these. Um, I try. I try to recycle and um, and save money at the same time. We we like to spend our um, our extra money on um, good paper and nice paint, and we'll we'll save money for. Um, on stuff that we can just get from um, recycling. So now I'm going to take, I'm just going to use the same salt to show you that maybe it might be a little bit different the longer it dries. We'll put some, some of that salt down here. And um, I'm not going to bother with this um, fine pink salt because it's going to have the same effect. But what I might do is use this thicker. Um, no, actually, I'm going to use this very coarse sea salt down at the bottom to see. Now, this is salt that I keep in my studio. I don't take it back into the kitchen to use it because um, you know it might be contaminated with paint so I just keep this stuff in my studio now if you can see this and it looks really really cool I like what's happening here but this was an accident 
the ultramarine blue somehow migrated over into this phthalo blue and it's pushing some of the color out but it looks really pretty it, that would make a very pretty sky um, technique there so that might be something we want to remember to maybe try later for a sky without the salt so sometimes uh, we call those happy accidents Okay, so um, that's all I'm going to do for now. It's time to let these dry, and then we'll come back and we'll um, take off the um, um, these um, bubble wraps and cling, cling wrap and gauze, and then we'll brush away the salt. I just thought of doing another experiment while this while we're waiting for this to dry, and this is just going to be a little bonus tip. Um, so I've never done this before, but um, I've been wanting to try this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do, uh, this is going to be painting with bubbles. So um, since this paint is already left over, I'm going to just pour some that wash, that blue paint into another, into this cup. I emptied it out. And, um, Let's try the phthalo blue. And uh, and I don't know if I want to do the Payne's gray or not, but we'll try it. Okay, so I'm just, uh, this is one way to use up paint. Now um, I'm going to take these to the um, to the sink and I'm going to uh, squirt in some dishwashing liquid into these and uh, fill it up with water and it's going to make bubbles. So I wonder if that's enough. Maybe I'll strip a little bit more. I don't want to use up all my paint, but I thought this would be a fun experiment for you and me. Okay, so let me go take, take these to the sink. Okay, so now I'm at the sink and um, I have some, this is Dawn dishwashing liquid inside this container. And what I'm going to do is just add a little squirt to each one of these cups. And then I'm going to fill it with warm water so that we get bubbles. And um, then we'll take these back into um, the art room and we will paint with bubbles. Okay guys, so I'm back in my art room and I'm at another table. So um, I'm just, I have this watercolor paper here and I'm just going to um, dip into these bubbles and just drop them onto the page. Just in a random way. I think this might make a good, um, like a watercolor, like a, a water scene, maybe, like a sea or um, an underwater painting with the bubbles, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how this. We'll see how this turns out. I'm just dripping the bubbles onto the page. That's the Payne's Gray, and now um, let me get these bubbles going and drop some of this lighter phthalo blue on here. Now 
I'm just using uh, whatever paint brushes that I could grab to um, get these bubbles mixed up real good and just drop them on here. Um, for me, I think art's meant to be fun. Um, I like to play around uh, and see, see, just see what can happen. Um, that's the whole whole thing about being creative and exploring. Um, the things that don't work out, you can scrap them, but you you learn something. And um, the things that do work out, you can. Um, try to uh, redo it in a um, in a more uh, in another painting and just uh, just explore uh, your your um, art materials and stuff that you might have on hand that you can get some uh, pretty cool effects with I think this is um, gonna be really pretty this um, this is one that's I just did, um, and it's our it's starting to dry, and you can see you can see the little bubbles here. So um, I'm gonna let continue letting that one dry, and then I'm gonna let this one dry, and then we'll come back and we'll see um, see what we have. But I think that's pretty cool. It was pretty fun, and if you try it, let me know. Um, let me know what you think, and um, if you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, I'll be back and reveal the final results uh, as soon as everything dries. So. See you soon. Okay, so I'm back and this has had time to dry. It's been about 24 hours. I just let this dry naturally and um, I didn't take a hair dryer to it. Um, I just uh, walked away and let it dry. So now we'll um, take off the, um, the salt and the saran wrap and the bubble wrap and gauze and see see what we have so um, I guess we'll do the bubble wrap first okay so um, with the bubble wrap you can see almost like little stone like textures I could see this being used for um, maybe um, some rocky textures or um, underwater scenes where there's pebbles and stuff like that or um, maybe even some interesting backgrounds. Um, if you use different colors, you would um, it would look differently. And then this is the saran wrap and the um, ultramarine blue, and that's kind of cool. It left almost um, a rocky formation like shape. So um, that's some interesting textures. And this is the galls, and um, I'm a little bit disappointed with um, with the color that I chose. This is it was the phthalo blue, and it didn't really um, react really well with the galls. I had um, peaked. I'd raised some up last night after it had time to dry and uh, to see what it done, and it, it this is what it looked like. It didn't really have much of an effect, so I went and um, put some more um, paint over half of it to see if that would do anything. But it didn't really, didn't really get the effects that I was going for. I've seen this done with um, other colors with a, a lot better effects, so I will be trying that out with different colors. And um, this is the salt effects, and as you can see, um, the salt reacts differently to the different colors. And um, I'm just looking for something to kind of wipe the salt off. I would normally do this outside because I don't really want to make a mess, but um, let me just brush some of this away. I 
I think uh, using an old toothbrush is pretty is pretty good way to remove the salt. Let's try this palette knife. Palette knife works good too. But um, I would suggest you do this outside, which I'm gonna take and when I finish this up, go outside and remove the rest of it because I don't want to get salt all over the place. But um, I just want to show you kind of what it looks like. It had a lot better reaction with the phthalo blue than it did the ultramarine and it even uh, worked pretty good with the um, Payne's Gray. Which this Payne's Gray is made from ultramarine blue, ivory, and ivory black. Um, so um, the ivory black must help it. But that's that and then this was the last experiment with the, um, the bubbles and I just did this on um, scrap paper and I thought that was really cool how how it reacted with the ultramarine blue right there and it's more subtle on the lighter colors but it's it's a really nice effect it's, I think it's beautiful it would look great for a water scene and this uh, this was the lighter color well this was all the colors and I just um, did the bubble laid the bubbles and then let them dry now I don't know how this will work if you try to paint over over this where I had the bubbles on it. So um, maybe I'll just draw something kind of simple just to see just to see um, what it would do. So this is neutral tint. I think I used all the paints gray I had out, but um, let's do a turtle, a sea turtle. So I'm just going to make kind of a oval shape. And I'm just doing this from my imagination. Um, so I, I might be wrong, I don't know. So I'm just going to do some like little shell shapes. Um, I can't remember exactly. Um, I may have too, too many of those. Um, those shapes but I just wanted to see how how this would look with a little little turtle and give it a little tail and um, let's see a little head they have those kind of yeah they have flippers I'm gonna make his head darker and give him I'm trying to remember what his their feet look like. And let's see, make this darker.
their feet kind of have funny shapes, so. Um, and their flippers. I'm just testing this just to see if you can paint over the 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 soapy bubbles. I don't know how archival this is, how long these um, paints will last where we added the salt and the dish soap, but you know it's some cool effects and. Um, and it's always fun to play around and try new things. So maybe if I wanted to go back in later and add some uh, some different colors or some more um, some more um, paint that would. Um, I can do that but I don't want to spend a lot of time on this right now because uh, this was just an experiment I'm gonna lift some of the paint just to give it a little more highlights there and you can see the bubbles through his skin so that gives his little his little legs a um, you know that bumpy effect like they have those little um, they have those little bumpy, I don't know, like, what it's called, uh, scales maybe, I don't know. But I think that's cool. It's not perfect and I could do better, but, um, Lighten some of that up a little bit so it doesn't have such hard lines. So, any excuse to paint, right? Um, so there's my little turtle. I think he's cute. And I will give him a couple little eyes here. And a little darker down here. A little darker on the tail. A little darker here and here. And let's put his head down a little bit by a little shadow there. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna put a a signature down here. I'm not sure where I want it to be. Maybe like this. I'm just gonna do my initials and Oh, <laughs> Happy New Year. This is January 1st, 2022. So I hope your new year is um, better than the last. And I hope you have peace, joy, and happiness and health for this coming year. So um, thank you for watching. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you would like to join me again for more art um, tips and tricks and whatever. Um, I hope you have a great day and a really good whole new year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.